So we're gonna go and do a little bit of math to try to figure out how much weight we're gonna need for the dive. And, and the reason we want to do it is because we've got so many new variables this weekend. Different undergarments, new suits. We've also got cylinders we've not dived before. And of course, different cylinders are gonna have different effects in the water. So we're gonna try and take all those variables and figure out how much weight we need. So the idea is going to be to see how heavy the tanks are at the start of the dive. So the first thing we'll do is we'll just pressurize the regs to see how much we have inside them. So because we've got the air integration, we're just going to see whether we can read the pressures. So I've got 208 on the left. Yeah, 209 and right, you've got 200, looks like. Okay, we're just gonna run through a quick bit of maths now. The recapping the data, we had 209 bar on the left, 200 in the right. We know they're 12 liters uh, internal volume of the cylinders. I'm gonna weigh these in the water now. And what we'll try and then do is do some maths to figure out what they'll look like at the end of a dive. You know, weigh these on land, that as well? Um, we don't need to weigh them on land because we don't actually know the volume of these cylinders, the external volume. So we don't actually know the effect that the water's gonna give them. So it's really only about knowing the water weight that's gonna help us with the actual experiment. Check they're off the bottom, not touching anything. And I weigh these, I'm getting 8.1 kilos. And when we weighed the two tanks together, we know that when we added those two together, that we had 8.1 kilograms. And that's at this pressure. So that'll give us about four kilos negative each cylinder, correct? Absolutely. And then what we'll know, because we know the pressures now, we know how much of that is there, and we know therefore how much it will be at the end of the dive. Now, when we make the end of dive weight check, we know, for today at least, we're gonna base it around 50 bar. And that's 50 bar in each tank. So it's actually 50 and 50. We're taking these 200s down to 50. So the question is, how much are we losing? The answer is, out of the first tank, we're losing 159 bars. Out of the second tank, we're losing 150 bars. We know that the tank's 12 litres each. So if we said, well, actually, how many litres of gas that is, we're taking 159 multiplied by 12. So we're actually going to take 1,900 and eight liters out of the left tank. And then we're gonna take something like 150 times 12. We're gonna take 1800 liters out of the right tank. This is of course assuming that we're balancing our cylinders perfectly. So the total amount of liters that we're using, are these two added together. Which if we then do that, that's the 1800 plus the 1908. We're actually gonna take 3,708 liters. Now, if we know that one liter of air weighs this many grams, and we know that we've used this many liters, we can work out how much lighter we are. And so if we multiply these two together, we're gonna see how light or how much weight we've lost through drinking the tanks down. So we've got the 3708 multiplied by 1.225 gram per liter. And we're going to get 1.225. We're actually going to get 4,542.3 grams. 
So this is how much lighter we are. Now this is in grams. If we convert it into kilos, well, we're just gonna move the decimal point three spots. And that is 4.54 kilo. So what we've seen is that losing the amount of gas from the 200, 210 bar down to 50, we've worked out how many liters that is. We've worked out how much each liter weighs. We therefore figured out the weight of gas that we're gonna breathe and exhale into the water is four and a half kilos, but we're starting at 8.1 kilos. So what that means is that those two tanks together will start at 8.1. We will lose the 4.5 and we'll finish up therefore in something like 3.6. So this here is what the tanks that we've just weighed that's what they will weigh when they're at 50 bar, okay? So let's go diving, and then let's weigh those tanks a second time when we're at this pressure now. But what we'll do to go and make some weight checks now, we're gonna take that 3.6 kilo, which is the end of dive weight of those tanks, we're gonna put that on our body at the start of the dive, and we're gonna make some surface weight checks and we're going to see how much weight we need to add to descend and just be neutral while pretending we're wearing two tanks at 50 bar. But rather than wear the tanks, we're gonna weigh the weights, wear the weights on a weight belt. Because we haven't got tanks at 50 bar and I don't wanna drain these tanks all the way down to 50 just to do the experiment. What I'd much rather do is make up a weight belt put that on my body and then just do a weight check. So let's go off and do that now. I'm gonna get in the water, empty the wing, open the dry suit valve, and I'm going to see if I exhale, do I sink? If I don't sink, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna take a kilo or two, and I'm gonna repeat that. And I'm gonna keep adding weight to myself until with a half lung, I'm neutrally buoyant. And what that means is that if I literally just waft my hands and pull myself underwater, I should stay there. I shouldn't rise, I shouldn't sink. I should be neutrally buoyant with a half lung. That's what all of the other weight checks that we've seen at the surface are showing us. And all we're trying to do here is do that with the tanks that we happen to be taking. We've been out a couple of really cracking dives We've done the weight check. So they're not both at 50, one's at 60, one's at 40. So it's the same as 250. 60 and 40 is 100, 50 and 50 is 100. Now we predicted earlier the loss of weight and what these tanks should end up with. So now it's gonna be a practical verification of the maths, all right? So one thing you see straight away is that the tanks, they now float base heavy, which is quite different to how they were. Yep. Now, because I knew they'd float a bit, I've stayed in the suit so I can fully get into the water. And what we'll do is we'll just zero the scale So again, that's leveled out at 3.6. We estimated we'd lose 4.5. 4.5 plus 3.6 is 8.1, which is what they weighed yesterday when they were full. Yep. So we know for definite the weight of air per litre, that's correct. And we know therefore the weight check has worked this way around as well. Yeah, and it's really interesting to see the cylinders 
how they're performing now, which is one well, of the I reasons think... we trim them on the body, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess you can you can tell if we think about it. It was the right cylinder that went to 40 bar. The right cylinder is the white one, which is the lighter one. So you can tell that it's the the lighter tank is the one that's more base heavy. And these are steel, so these are technically you call them low pressure steel, steel two three twos. Yeah. So. You can still see, even with a steel, you need to trim it. Now with the tank that's at 60 bar, it's almost hanging horizontal. So you wouldn't need to trim it quite as much. Yeah. But still you would, you would you trim just that. Press the base down, that's on the other one. Can you reach that? This... Give it a push, yeah. If I took different tanks that were a different brand, that had a different weight, even if I took aluminiums compared to steel tanks, they're gonna have different buoyancy characteristics. So this is why it was really important. If I take these tanks and I took a lighter set of tanks, well, they would weigh less. I'd still use the same gas weight, but I would finish with a different weight of tank. The gas weight is almost always the same. If you're at 200 bar going to 50, well, you're always using that same gas so this is pretty much what you're always losing. So if you start with tanks that are at six, well, you'll finish at 1.5. If you start with tanks that are at four, well, you'll finish a half kilo positive. So this is why it's really important that if you're going to do this exercise with, let's say, an aluminum cylinder, you'll get very different results. And so you'll actually end up carrying more weight with you for the aluminium and we'll get more into that with another whiteboard lesson. The key thing really was to say, when we've got this many variables, how can we get to this point earlier in the day rather than going in the water with let's say 20 kilos, knowing it will be enough just to purge the tanks, just to take that weight off us. So we're attempting to get closer to it. This number I'm reasonably happy with, I know that the scientists that have worked this out, they're pretty happy with the weight of air. We're obviously using digital luggage scales. It's not a scientific uh, device, but it's gonna be fairly accurate, we think. And because we're measuring it in a body of water that's not moving, we should get reasonable results. So what we're gonna do, we know this number, this is what we predict, and we're going to see what that is actually. And crucially, if we've done all of this right, the weight that we've chosen to weight me with will be correct when we do the real end of dive weight check. Just a few tips if you're gonna do this in really cold water and you're gonna be free flowing your regulators like we did, you will get ice form over the first stages. It's important to do it in short bursts or better still, breathe the gas down so you avoid having ice form. The only way was to shut down the cylinder valve and breathe from the other regulator once this happened. With the end of dive weight check, make sure to take all the air from your dry suit, put back in just enough to stop the squeeze. The BCD should be fully empty and then you're looking to hold the safety stop depth, five meters, 15 feet, and breathe in, move up, breathe out, move down, hold 50% and stay level at that depth. We cover this in full details with the end of dive weight check video. So make sure you check that out.